Hello and welcome to my workshop. In this video, we are continuing to do some butterflies or bow ties or whatever you want to call them. <laughs> now, in the previous video, we learned about the concept of the butterfly, how to make them and how to make the inset. In that video, I also used a very thin piece of material like the three millimeter plywood. And it was very easy to do cutouts for both the butterfly and the inset and just uh, uh, put one inside the other. In this video, we are going to do an actual production run where we are going to fix this particular piece of wood and that's black walnut and it has a nice big crack in it. Uh, what I'm going to be doing is create the inset into the wood. Uh, I've already done the butterflies previously. Uh, they're about six millimeters in depth. So what we're going to be doing is a six millimeter inset into the wood on both sides of the wood. So, you know, just to make it a little bit more interesting. It might be an overkill, but it's going to be more interesting to do so. So, uh, since the butterflies are already done, I'm going to take them out to the bandsaw and cut them out. And I followed my tip from my video is I have a thicker piece of wood. I think it's about eight millimeter piece of wood out of which I cut out only six millimeters of it. I didn't want the butterflies to spring and thereby being damaged by the rotating bit. Uh, so I'm going to take those to the bandsaw and I am going to uh, clean them up. And in the meantime, uh, the machine is going to work on the inset. So, how to do the inset and how to carve out the wood in the right amount of depth? Of course, there are several ways and let's go to the Luban software and figure this out. Now, this is our inner path and we know it's the inner path because of the sharp corner right here. And we remember from the previous video, the sharp corner and the radius of the two, it kind of leaves a nice curve on our desired path. So when we create the, uh, the two path, the parameters of the two path, uh, we can select the method called fill. And fill is basically gonna carve out anything in between the outlines of the path. So if we do a sample, let's do a sample five and a half millimeters with our two, the flat end mill, uh, and everything else being the same, we're gonna see this. Uh, so it's going to go from one end to the other and carve out anything in between. And number one, you're going to see it's going to take about seven and a half hours. Well, I don't have seven and a half hours per side. And now we're going to have to go into our second method. And the second method is again based on one of my previous videos where I talked about the depth of cut, uh, relief carving. So what we can do in our uh, inner toolpath uh, SVG, we can select the toolpath and give it a fill of black color. And black in the terms of relief carving is the bottom most layer. And after we load it into the Luban software, we can select the so-called relief carving. And in that case, well, we do see the black color of the uh, SVG that we just gave it earlier on. But when we create the two path and we do our five and a half millimeters with the flat end mill, we are still getting seven hours and four minutes. So we see there is an improvement of the time, but not a lot. So what can we do next to speed it up? Well, we can do on the path carving, which is gonna give us something similar to what we have with the butterflies, and then use our chisels of varied sizes to just carve out the remainder that's in between. Uh, that's all perfectly fine. The only problem is there is not that consistency in the depth of cut. So one of your strokes might go deeper, one of your strokes might go slightly shallower, so you're going to have a wavy edge and that may prevent the proper gluing of the butterfly to the wood. So what another method similar to that one is do the outline, but then use a router at a set depth. And that's the method I'm going to be using right now because the router being a powerful machine and I can do a much bigger bit can help me clean out a lot of that area pretty quickly. And then I can switch to a smaller and smaller router just so that I can get into the corners 
or I can use my chisels to get into the corners. Uh, so that for me is going to be the fastest method and this is what we're going to be doing right now. Stay tuned. Okay, let's briefly look at the setup. Um, I do have this backing board and you're going to find out why in a second. I've clamped the big main board onto the surface and because it's long at the back I am supporting it with a piece of MDF which turns out to be the right height for it. So that way I'm not going to have that much of a variance between the front and the back and the back doesn't weigh too much that it bends the surface. Uh, I have made these little markings onto the wood. Dot pencil mark right here and a pencil mark right here. And I did it this way because once I turn it over and line up those marks and execute the exact same G code with the exact same origin, the butterflies will pretty much be one on top of each other. There might be a minor variance because of the angle of the cut, but pretty close together. Now it's going to take about 15 minutes per side to do the on the path uh, for the six millimeters. And while the machine is running, I am going to take those butterflies and cut them up on the bandsaw so that they're out of their shell. This is how the butterflies came out of the maple piece. As I mentioned earlier, I was using a much thicker piece and as you can see, there is a little lip that has formed right here. That little lip is very important because now all you need to do is take your router, line up the piece with the bit and then lower or raise the bit accordingly so that it just touches the lip. And now you can see I've set the maximum depth of cut. Now let's take the router and route out the center of those uh, insets that we just did.
And this is literally how long it took. Now the cleanup, <laughs> that might be a different story. But let's take a closer look and see how it all fits. Now for this particular butterfly, I removed the lip with a template router bit and I did have a little mishap, but that shouldn't stop me from doing some creative fix to it. Now let's see how it all fits. Pretty tight, pretty snug, and let's take a closer look. So we do see minor gap that we have seen earlier, but that's nothing. It will be probably filled with the glue that I'm going to put in. There is the gap from the template router bit that took out some of the wood. I guess there was some sort of a weakness or a crack. A minor mishap with the router, but that's okay. Uh, other than that, everything seems to be in excellent shape. Now it's time for me to take the glue, glue it up and then complete the board. So next time you see me is I'm going to show you the final display piece. If you like this video make sure to like share and subscribe and also hit the notification bell to get notified of my future video releases also follow me on all social media channels and consider supporting me on patreon all the links are down in the description